Hi, this is Andrea Kane, and I'm here with you for HIT 330 Healthcare Delivery Systems. We are now on week three, which is also chapter three in our textbook. If you want to open your textbook to page 95, um, you're welcome to follow along with me as I move through the slides. This chapter is the second part <clears throat> of our first section, which is system foundations. So once we finish chapter three, we will be done with system foundations, moving on to the next section um, in our textbook. So let's look into the evolution of health services in the U.S. Our learning objectives, at least according to our textbook, are developments shaping the U.S. healthcare system, understanding the history of mental health care, why the system has been resistant to reforms, explore the corporatization of health care, identify the globalization of health care, look at historical perspective on the Affordable Care Act, and discuss prospects of new health care reform efforts. So from an introductory standpoint, the U.S. health care system has been shaped by our anthro-cultural values as Americans, as well as social, political, and economic antecedents. The evolution of medical science and technology has played a role, as has reform, which has taken center stage off and on in American politics, as well as tracing transformations in medical practice. So let's talk about medical services in the pre-industrial era. In colonial times in America, medicine lagged behind other countries quite significantly. We were considered a third world country um, around the time that uh, the Revolutionary War uh, occurred. Treatment attitudes emphasize natural history and common sense and strong do domestic character, meaning that it really occurred more in the home environment than anything else. Um, there were five factors that made the medical profession an insignificant trade, meaning that physicians, as we know them today, um, their profession was considered insignificant. First of all, medical practice was in disarray. Here in the United States, medical procedures were primitive. They were across all of Europe as well, um, but they were particularly primitive here in the United States. And there was an institutional core missing. Um, there were things like almshouses and pest houses, mental asylums, and a dreaded hospital. Demand was unstable. It was always fee for service, and medical education was extremely substandard. If you ever read first-hand accounts of medicine in that um, era, you will be absolutely appalled um, by what was considered medical education, much less the practice of medicine. Moving into the post-industrial era, physicians um, started delivering scientifically and technologically or technically advanced services to insured patients. They became an organized medical profession. They gained power, prestige, and financial success. Healthcare took its current shape during this period. There were seven growth factors in professional sovereignty growth. Urbanization, people moved away from the farms into the cities. Science and technology advanced, um, particularly in Europe. Institute, and that eventually did come to the United States. Institutionalization, hospitals, formal hospitals um, began to be established and maintained. Dependency, people became dependent on medical care. Um, there was autonomy and organization amongst the profession. There were uh, licensing of physicians came into being. There was significant physician educational reform and major attempts to standardize that educational reform. There became a specialization in medicine. Um, mental health care was reformed. Public health was developed. Um, veterans health services began to be um, began to be focused on, and workers' compensation was formed. We saw the rise of private health insurance with techno technological, social, and economic factors. There were early blanket insurance policies. Economic necessity and the Baylor plan came into being um, with hospitals. And you can read about all of this. Um, let's see here. Yes. Um, let's 
starting this this slide really starts on page 112 and moves forward um, but you can see about reading um, about the Baylor plan uh, at the bottom of page 113. Successful private enterprise took off. Self-interest of physicians became um, more public and more um, obvious. Combined hospital and physician coverage occurred and employment-based health insurance came about. Then you had in the 1990s a failure of national health care initiatives. Political inexpediency, institutional similarities, ideological differences, and tax aversion, all of those came together um, to make sure that national health care initiatives um, did not advance in the 90s. Um, <clears throat> however, Medicare and Medicaid were created in the 60s, and public health agencies took on a more regulatory role. Now we've moved into what you would call the corporate era. There were some early developments, and you can read about this um, on page 121. It starts at the bottom. The HMO Act of 1973 came into being, and healthcare delivery became corporatized. Managed care organizations just bloomed and they basically became indistinguishable from large insurance corporations. We've also seen in the corporate era the globalization of healthcare with telemedicine, medical tourism, foreign direct investment in health services, and health professionals moving to other countries. With the globalization of healthcare, there's been three aspects. U.S. corporations expanded overseas, Medical care by U.S. providers became in great demand overseas, and then there became global health discipline. So now let's talk about the era of health care reform. When it comes to the Affordable Care Act, there were six factors in why it was passed, and I'm not going to go into detail. You can read those. And to summarize, the need for health insurance recognized in the Great Depression U.S. health insurance became, began as a private endeavor. Medicare and Medicaid were created, and those were public endeavors. And the Affordable Care Act passed without seeking consensus about, among Americans. And as a result, some of what has passed has been um, unraveled through legislation, courts, and things like that. And you may um, have a strong opinion about whether that was a good thing or a bad thing, um, but I think the important part is for us to recognize that the Affordable Care Act was passed. It did have certain provisions in it. Some of that has been repealed, um, and some of it continues on today. So um, I'm going to choose to go down the matter-of-fact road, shall we say. Um, hopefully you'll have a great week, and... Um, this is a good chapter for us to finish out week three on. Starting next week, we will move into system resources, which will get us a little bit more into the nitty-gritty and out of history. Take care.